Hey guys, welcome back to Flat Creek Outdoors. I'm Phil and today we're doing more firewood. It's been the trend here lately, especially since I got the new Wolf Ridge splitter in and we're still getting it dialed in to work to its capacity. But uh, I have a bunch of wood up in the parking lot that I want to gather up. So just fueled up the tractor. I'm going to go load up the carry-all, bring it down here. Still got a couple of those big rounds. I've got a new tool that I want to show you guys. And then for the first time using the splitter, we're going to try out the six-way wedge today. So it's going to be a fun one. Stick around. I'm inspired by thirst. I'm inspired by worth. I desire your worst so you can just hide while I work. I ain't tired you first. I'll write a second, third verse about the lies you go disperse. You never need ish, I know it hurts. Something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear that I'm inspired by all this shit. Tell me that I can and I won't. That's what God be the most. Which one lies? I'll do what I want. I got up early this morning. Temperatures were in the teens. That is frigid for us here in Central Virginia. We are not used to temperatures that cold, but I decided I'm going to bear it and I'm going to come out here and I'm going to work anyway. And it's warmed up a little bit since the sun come, has come out, but I don't think the high today is supposed to be much above freezing. So for lunch today, I actually packed up um, some soup in one of these Yeti insulated mugs that I usually use for coffee. And I thought, well, if it keeps coffee hot for a few hours, how about some soup? So I packaged this up at uh, before nine o'clock today. And I don't know if you can see, but it is still steaming here at almost one o'clock. Oh, oh, yeah, that's good. It is just the right temperature almost almost too hot four plus hours in the mug i think that's pretty awesome if you don't have one of these i'll drop a link in this video's description where you can get one on amazon and of course if you buy through one of our links that does support the channel so we certainly appreciate that so what do you guys think about sweet gum for firewood I have always been told that it's kind of a trash wood. I know my dad always really hated it. He said it's good for nothing but toothpicks and even for that, it's not very good. And I uh, lately though have kind of discovered it as being pretty decent. We were just about out of firewood at the house and I had some rounds here, actually they were quarters. They were, I just broke them up into bigger blocks for our fire pit here, but they were all good and dry. So I broke them down into smaller pieces and I took some home and it actually burns really well in the fireplace. It pr puts out a pretty good flame. It doesn't do a lot of coals. So if you're really looking for retained heat with coals, like in a wood stove, uh, they're not, I don't think, uh, very good for that. Sweet gum's not very good for that. But I'm burning it here in the fire pit today to keep warm and it's doing just fine and I burned it at home and it's doing just fine. We have heaps of this stuff around the property and considering that most of my customers just burn in their fireplaces or their backyard fire pits, I think I'm gonna start mixing it in again. I was just kind of hauling everything off to our burn pile and there's a lot of sweet gum out in the middle of the field in that burn pile right now. But I've got a couple logs up here in this area that I've been clearing where I've been pulling some of the other oak from. Some of the oak that I split recently has come from up there. Anyway, there's a couple of sweet gum logs up there that are decent size, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and split them up. We'll probably get into a little bit of that today as well. So let's get the tractor fired up, get up there and get some wood and start splitting.
just because I know somebody's going to ask, why did you cut the rounds off that log you picked up with the grapple? There were two reasons. One, it was just a little too heavy. The grapple and the loader couldn't quite lift it off the ground. It curled it and got it off the ground a little bit, but it wouldn't lift it. The other reason was that it was just too long. Uh, after I cut those six rounds off, it just barely made it through the gate. I don't have a tape measure on me, but I have a 12 foot gate. So it's over 11 feet long as it sits right now, which is plenty long for the tractor. Any longer than that. And if you get on anything off camber or on the slope or whatever, uh, a long log in the front can really make the tractor kind of tippy. So time to fire up the splitter here and start splitting.
Well, pretty good day. You might notice the sun angle has changed quite a bit, and that's because I spent the entire afternoon with a couple of different contractors that came through and gave us a price for clearing and a couple other projects that we want to do around here. So uh, it didn't actually take me many, many hours to split this wood. It actually only took about 40 minutes. So uh, pretty pleased with the productivity of the splitter. Um, I did make one little adjustment on the detent for the retract handle and it is working pretty well, especially when it's up to operating temperature. It doesn't quite uh, uh, kick in and work correctly until it is fully up to temperature, but that's expected. The manual says that um, Other people have commented that on other videos. So uh, what I've said previously um, About the splitter not working correctly with the auto return not working and the retract handle not popping back out the way that it's supposed to uh, a couple of those comments on my previous videos I did not have Right, I based my comments based on limited experience with the splitter and it wasn't fully up to temperature. Once it gets fully up to temperature, it was still an intermittent problem. I made one tiny adjustment on the D10 handle and it's been pretty good to go, especially when it is up to temperature. So all in all, I'm pretty pleased. Let's talk about the six way wedge because that was my first time using it and I think it worked pretty good. A couple observations though. Uh, one is that there's a whole lot more shearing going on if you could tell on the grain on this piece of wood as an example you know it's a nice triangle shaped piece of wood that came off of that wedge but the way that it was you know positioned on there just sheared right through where the grain got a little bit gnarly so if you just got straight grain pieces I think the wedges are probably pretty good but if you have any evidence of a knot or a twisted grain or anything you're probably better off working with a four-way wedge where you can control the positioning of the pieces of wood a lot easier and I was able to take bigger rounds and get lots of nice little blocks like this which if I'm doing bundles which I do quite a bit of uh, bundle sales I like to have nice uniform pieces like this and it's really easy for me to take a larger block break it into quarters for example and then from those quarters split those down maybe two or three times through the four-way wedge and get lots of nice uniform barkless pieces like this so this pile here I bet is at least half pieces like this by doing quite a bit of four-way wedge work with many of those uh, rounds that I put through it. So that's my um, initial observation. Obviously, I haven't used the six-way wedge a lot, and I would like to use it on some other species of wood. I know I commented in the beginning of the video that maybe we would get to a uh, gum today and some other stuff, but I just ran out of time and spent too much time with these different contractors that came through here. And then you had the debut of this tool, the now, my understanding is this tool has a couple different names, but this is a Husqvarna brand. We got a label on there? Yeah. Husqvarna brand, Hookaroon, Pickaroon, or Sappy, I don't know what you want to call it. One of those names, and I found it online by uh, a couple of those names. So, um, exactly what this is, you guys tell me in the comments. But uh, picking up rounds without bending over, this seems to be pretty good. I think it has limitations though. I used it on some pretty heavy rounds that were probably 70, 80 pounds, and it was uh, not really gripping onto those super well. So I think if you have a lot of you know, six to 12 inch rounds. It probably does pretty good on those. You get above that and the rounds get really heavy, particularly with this red oak that we have here. And I think that exceeds maybe the limitation of, of this tool. But uh, pretty, pretty pleased overall. I did a lot less bending over today than I have uh, in previous splitting sessions that were pretty similar. So I think this is gonna be an excellent tool long term. This was a gift from a viewer and friend, and actually you may have seen him on a previous video, Aaron with Grizzly Wood Services. He brought his uh, Wolf Ridge 35HO up here. We made a couple videos about it. He sent me this as a thank you for spending a little time with him and introducing his channel here on YouTube. So go check out his channel. There'll be another link in this video's description to go check it out. And as he grows his channel, you guys can support him as he figures out how to navigate this crazy world of YouTube. So sun is going down and I need to wrap us up. I appreciate you guys following along. If you got comments or questions or whatever, you can leave those below. I'm gonna update you guys on a future video on some of my plans for the firewood business and how I expect my firewood business to change here in 2022. So stay tuned next time or in a future video, it might be two next times from now and you can get filled in on that. So hope you have a good one. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.